Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A community on edge as police in Novi investigate a string of home invasions. Four homes hit in just the past few weeks. And police say the thieves plan their crimes and enter homes when homeowners are away. We're told the crews also use technology that jams security systems. Erica Erickson spent the afternoon talking with police. Uh, Erica, they believe these criminals may also be linked to other break-ins across Oakland County, right? Yes, and what's a little scary is they're targeting specific types of homes like these homes here in Novi with open areas or wooded areas behind them. Take a look. It's like they just knew where to go, what to steal in and out in just minutes. That's what one Oakland County homeowner tells Local 4. In other parts of the country, they have captured um, cameras and trackers. So they track your, your movement, begin to pattern your life. That's just creepy and unsettling. It's extremely unsettling. We're increasing our police presence in these neighborhoods. Now Novi Police, working with Oakland County and surrounding agencies, say a crew out of South America has been invading high-end homes in its city, off of 8 Mile from Haggerty to Beck Road, four break-ins since Halloween. This photo from the latest one on November 15th. They're going after uh, things that are easily carried out of the house, mostly jewelry, uh, high-end bags. Along with credit and debit cards, cash and designer clothes. Same method of entry, and they're known to use uh, Wi-Fi jammers. The South American crews previously targeting homes in cities like Franklin, Birmingham, Bloomfield, Oakland Township, and Northville that back wooded or open areas and move like a special ops team. And that's the Chileans. Now the Colombians and the Venezuelans, not that same MO. They're a little more opportunistic and even more willing to resort to violence. Police say they usually have a team of three to five guys, often use rental cars and dress in heavy clothing. Do you think they could escalate? Well. Obviously, anybody that's willing to come into your house has the potential to be violent, in my opinion. What will they do if they're confronted? Novi Police and Sheriff Bouchard say they especially want to catch these guys in the act. That's their best bet. So if you see something, someone who just looks out of place, trust your gut, call the police. Uh, something just doesn't feel right. You're never a bother. Call them right away. We're in Novi tonight. Erica Erickson, Local 4. No doubt. Neighborhood and residents can be a really important ingredient to solving this. All right, Erica. All right, it was a rainy morning commute, but the showers have held off for the most part tonight. Kim Adams with us now. May see some more rain, and you used another word earlier by the end of the week. I, I no. did. <laughs> I did. The yes word we can actually say on the air that we haven't said much. In fact, the last time we had snow was back in April, April 20th to be exact. So it's been a while. 60 in Detroit, 57 in Ann Arbor, upper 50s in Pontiac, and 61 in Monroe. So a very mild day today. Tomorrow will be our last day that we make it to 50, at least for a little while. 50 degrees at noon, but we'll also bring in a chance for a few scattered showers during the midday hour. And then we'll get a break and then more rain Wednesday night into Thursday morning, just in time for that morning commute. And there is a chance, not everyone, but a few places could see a few wet snowflakes Thursday morning. And then we have another chance for rain Friday and even a slight chance Saturday morning. So we'll talk more about the timing because even though it's a lot of rain, it every day doesn't have rain all day long. So we'll talk about when's the best time for you to be outside coming up. A lot of people were excited when the gas station chain Sheets opened its first Michigan location near Detroit Metro Airport. If you've ever traveled across Pennsylvania like me, it's a pretty cool store. But Sheets plans to expand its footprint across the state, and that now has some people concerned. Ty Steele uh, has an update for us today. He spoke with a group that says this could be bad for small businesses. Ty. Yes, Devin, that's right. The Middle Eastern and North African American Chamber of Commerce, or MENA, as they like to be called, just wrapped up a press conference in this very room where I'm, sta or I'm standing, which is why you see these empty seats. They wrapped up about 30 minutes ago at their headquarters here in Dearborn, Michigan. And yes, they say that larger corporations like Sheets are bad for the local mom and pops, even causing many of them to close down. And furthermore, one of the local business owners we spoke with today is claiming unfair and discriminatory business practices by one of the cities involved. We've spoken with everyone involved with this story today, including you, the customer, and here's what everyone had to say. I love it. I do. We're so glad to have Sheets over here. 
Popular gas station chain Sheets is expanding in Metro Detroit, and customers like Lisa Truitt say, bring it on. The atmosphere is clean. The people are really nice. They don't like the gas prices, that's why I'm here now. <laughs> The Pennsylvania-based gas station plans to open 50 to 60 gas stations in Michigan within the next five years, eight more in the metro Detroit area. This location in Romulus is the only one in Michigan right now after opening up back in August to long lines out the door. But not everyone is happy about the expansion. Their expansion efforts have been very aggressive. Faye Niemer represents the Middle East and North African American Chamber of Commerce, or MENA, representing hundreds of local business owners. It's really edging out the small independent operators from ethnic communities, namely the Arab American community as well as the Chaldean American community. Local owners like Jay Hamoud, who wanted to build his own station in the city of East Point, says he was denied while Sheets was given the green light. Why do you think you were really denied? I think I was really denied because they didn't, um, I, I felt like it's a discrimination case, you know. I mean, at that at point, I didn't feel it, but like afterward, after the fact that Chiefs came, and under the same circumstance, circumstances and condition, they were denied. Uh, they, I was denied, and then they were approved. A Sheets representative not there at the meeting, not able to go on camera, giving us this statement instead, which reads in part, each store will create 30 to 50 local jobs, offering not just competitive wages, but also exceptional benefits, including medical, dental, and vision coverage, tuition reimbursement, and more. Back at the gas station, we brought Mina's concerns to customers, and they say, let the lowest prices win. I say, well, they need to lower their prices. Bottom line. Prices is much better than any other place. I'm getting it for less expensive than the locals. It's almost like you say, like Sam's. Back out here live at the MENA headquarters in Dearborn, Michigan, after that meeting wrapped up about 30, 35 minutes ago. And I asked the CEO, what was your goal of this informational meeting, this press conference today? And she said it's to build a coalition of support among these smaller gas station owners so they can pool their resources and then go up against these larger corporations in court like Sheets to hopefully plead their case. So they want the more collective bargaining power. And as far as that business owner, Jay Hamoud, that we showed you, he says he is, in fact, going forward with his lawsuit against the city of East Point for what he calls discriminatory business practices. We'll keep you posted when he files that. As far as Sheets is concerned, though, they are moving forward with their expansion into Michigan, including those eight in the metro Detroit area. Live here in Dearborn at the MENA headquarters, Ty Steele, Local 4. Yeah, that's a lot, no doubt about it. All right, Ty. More than 200,000 Detroit residents and businesses received letters notifying them their water service lines may contain lead or other materials. These notices happen because the EPA now mandates all U.S. cities and townships to send annual letters to properties with known lead or galvanized lines. Despite the notices, the Detroit Water and Sewerage Department emphasized the city's drinking water is indeed safe. Again, if you've received a letter, it does not mean there's been a change in the city's water quality. We have a full press conference held by DWSD on our website. Just go to clickondetroit.com. A local woman who lost five members of her family in a drunk driving accident in Washington, D.C. She is in Washington, D.C., I should say right now, for a candlelight vigil on the National Mall. That loss spurred her to fight, and she believes the ripple effects are still felt by so many people. My sister, Rima, was a physician. She dedicated her life to saving lives. Um, and my nieces and nephew um, were kids. Um, and these types of events, they have a ripple effect that goes beyond immediate family and friends. Rima Abbas, her husband and three children were killed by a drunk driver in Kentucky while driving back to Michigan from Florida. Her sister fought to pass legislation to put anti-drunk driving technology into all cars. It became law in 2021. But she says three years later, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration still hasn't released recommendations to make it happen. We don't measure time by days or weeks or months. It's measured by lives. We know that drunk driving kills over 10,000 people on our roads every year. So when we hear NHTSA or the auto industry say, we are not ready yet, all I hear is more people have to die before we can get this technology in cars. Now, we contacted regulators at NHTSA today, and they tell us they have open rulemaking underway on this issue and are finalizing a report to Congress on where things stand. Legislation named for the Abbas family mandates drunk driving detection systems in new cars by the year 2026.
Americans are set to take record advantage of the convenience of online ordering this holiday season. But with that comes more risk to fall victim to porch pirates. So as millions of packages get set to arrive on doorsteps around the country, we're seeing how you can protect your things. Americans will ring up a record $240.8 billion in online sales this holiday season. That's according to Adobe Analytics, with most purchases slated for home delivery and providing more opportunity for porch pirates. Now's the time to be a lot more vigilant. CNET Money Editor Deja Milden says protecting packages can begin before items leave the warehouse by choosing options like package tracking notifications or requiring a signature for delivery and purchasing with a credit card that offers a refund or replacement in the event of a theft. Go ahead and check with your credit card issuer and see do I have purchase protection? What are the limitations in case something like this does happen? It's better to be proactive in this case rather than reactive. For households using a doorbell camera, Milden says a small upgrade for extra recording capability around the holiday rush can help. If you don't have storage availability or recording, definitely see if that's something you can add on. Usually just log online and pay that fee. Consumers might want to consider in-store pickup for online orders or have packages delivered to pick up locations to reduce risks. And in the spirit of the season, Milden also suggests reaching out to neighbors to help keep an eye on your packages and theirs. And experts add one step that victims of porch pirates often overlook is reporting the theft to law enforcement. Taking that step and providing information and doorbell footage could help catch a thief and bring the overall number of swiped packages down. Tigers games will be broadcast on FanDuel Sports Network thanks to a new broadcasting deal. The deal is with Diamond Sports Group and keeps the team on FanDuel Sports Network for all in-market games. That means FanDuel will have all the games that aren't selected exclusively by national networks like ESPN, Fox, or Apple TV.